I prefer really not to, um, not to speak. If I speak, I am in, in big trouble. In big trouble. And I don't want to be in big trouble. Was Nick Dacos robbed is the question on all Collingwood supporters' um, minds at the moment. Is the Brownlow rigged? All this stuff. We'll talk about it in a little bit. But first, uh, before we get into the, the, the brunt of this video, Patrick Cripps, 45 votes, a worthy, worthy winner. Uh, dual Brownlow medalist, so congratulations to Cripps. Um, absolutely, again, an incredible year. Really put Carlton on his back this year. And you can see from 38 votes with Nick, Nick put Collingwood on, on his back as well. Um, so cheers to, cheers to Cripper. Um, again, I just want to say thank you to whoever joined my stream yesterday. We had about, at one stage, 300 viewers, which is the most on any Swoop stream. Um, I had the most fun I've ever had on a stream, uh, and that was all because of you uh, and your support, and it really meant a lot to me. So we're going to be doing more and more streams, especially when I come back from Europe. I'm going to be in my streaming era. We're going to be doing Fortnite and shit. It's going to be a lot of fun now that I don't have a job. So that's going to be fun. Um, so thank you for that. Uh, if you want memberships for... Um, to become a Swoop member are down below. Just hit that button. Uh, the middle membership is going to be uh, cheaper than a medium almond latte, which is incredible, inflation, etc. And you'll be supporting the channel, supporting me, helping me make more videos. But let's get into the brunt of this video now. Again, what an incredible count. Like we haven't had something like this for so long. And we did a predictions video um, a couple days ago, or it might've been yesterday, I think. Um, and we had it going pretty close and it was pretty close to the line. A lot of predictions had him either tying, so Cripps and, um, Nick Dacos tying. The official AFL website had it at about 33 each. Cripps hit 33 by, I think it was like round 17 or 18. He hit 33 votes, which was his predicted. Finishes with 45. Uh, Nick Dacos finishes with 38. So this was touted to be one of the closest races in history. And it didn't seem to be. Um, Nick was kind of catching up, but Cripps, whenever Nick got three, Nick uh, Cripps got three. Or whenever Nick got two, Cripps got three. And so, et cetera, et cetera. So it wasn't as close as every single pundit um, thought it was. But it was a very interesting count. And I have a lot of thoughts that we'll uh, start getting into. So the biggest thought, and it probably couldn't be a separate video just in general, is the way the Brownlow sort of works. Now, did Cripps have a very good year? Yes, 100%. A very deserving winner of the Brownlow. Did he have a 45 vote year, the most votes in history? I didn't think so. I didn't think it was a 45 vote year, but who's taking votes off him and Carlton? No one, right? And then you look at, and you're probably thinking, oh, Luke, you're so biased. Of course, because because Carlton. No, but then you look at um, Nick Dacos's year. He had 38 votes. Now, 38 votes wins the Brownlow the last 97 times. It is the now with with Patrick Cripps the second most Brownlow votes ever in the history of the Brownlow. Uh, Dane Swan won the Brownlow with 34 votes previously. Patrick Dangerfield held. Uh, sorry, Dustin Martin held uh, the. The, the most votes with 36, and Nick Dacos finished with 38. Did he have a 38 vote year? Was his year, I, I don't know if, we, what would you say, it's not statistically better, like Brownlow vote better, I guess statistically better than 97 other winners? Probably not, I, I wouldn't say. But then how do you compare apples for apples or apples with oranges? You really can't compare, but just looking at it, I, I thought he had a fantastic year, but I didn't think he had a 38 vote year. I thought about 33, 34, 35 votes would have been around around uh, what he what he sort of got this year. Uh, and the same with Patrick Cripps. I really thought it was going to be um, a tie around that 33 to 35 mark. Um, but Cripps surpassed everyone and smashed it with uh, 45. So hopefully you, you, you sort of understand what I'm saying because I don't know if I'm articulating it um, well enough. Another thing that I want to sort of talk about uh, is just the voting in general. Now, this 3-2-1 has been going on for, for a few years now. And we know that the umpires don't get the stats. So they have to go off memory. Now, 
should they be going off memory? Because I can't remember what I did this morning. And that was, um, you know, or I can't even remember what happened when I got home. That was four hours ago, let alone uh, trying to bounce the ball, trying to see if that was holding the ball, trying to see if that was deliberate, trying to see if they're fighting and, and, and swapping it around and this and that and 100, 200 decisions a game that you got to do or whatever it is. And then at the end of the game, you have to go, oh, who had a good game? Oh, how many did, how many possessions did Cripps get? How many possessions did Nick Dacos get? Oh, I thought he got 20, maybe he got 35. Uh, he kicked the goal here, ba 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 ba. Is that really how we are voting for the best player? And I've got a perfect example here for you. So in this example, and I use this example, um, it, it ties up with Cripps. So Cripps got, um, on the, in the King's birthday weekend, Cripps got two votes. He had a 19 disposal game at 47% uh, efficiency. So not a good two, that's not a two vote game, right? But when you look at our game against Melbourne, Nick Dacos had 15 disposals. He was subbed out and he got one vote. How? How does that happen? How is he getting 15 disposals, subbed out and gets one vote? But then you look at Josh Dacos, 34 disposals, Seven coaches votes, um, which was second most to Jack Chris. So Jack Chris got three votes. Seven coaches votes, zero Brownlow votes. Did the umpires choose the wrong Dacos? Because there's no way in hell that... And that Nick, I, love, I love Nick Dacos and I'm so biased towards Collingwood, but there is no way that Nick Dacos, a 15 disposal sub out game is worth one vote and Josh Dacos' 34 disposals and seven coaches' votes is worth zero votes. I'm sure they got the wrong Nick Day. I'm sure they got the wrong Dacos there because someone said, oh, Dacos had a good game. Yeah, Dacos had a good game. They're like, okay, Nick Dacos. It's like, what do you mean? So this is why I think that they just need stats because, because then you look at this, Nick Dacos versus the Ruse. 29 disposals, 18 contested possessions, two goals, 10 score involvements. That's one vote. So that game there is a worse game, you know, vote-wise, than Patrick Cripps' two votes for 19 disposals and 47% 47% efficiency. And that game is equal votes to a 15 disposal game when you got subbed out. How? How is that? How is that possible? Like, uh, there's something just... Something just has to happen with this, the way the Brownlow... Not, maybe not how it's counted, but just how they go in there and... Um, and, and they just need the stats. I feel like they really, really, really just need the stats. And that's not even just for, you know, Nick and, and Cripps. It's not just a bias thing towards Collingwood and Carlton. Uh, it's happened a lot. There was a couple of games where Sheasel did really well, didn't get any votes. Uh, Lockie Neal did really well, didn't get any votes. Um, even games where players had 10 coaches votes. So the coaches thought they were the best on the ground, not even one vote. So I just... Would love to be a fly on the wall to see how the umpires are talking this through. We talked about how Ray Chamberlain, you know, puts up, writes some notes, puts it in his like sock throughout the game. Um, I just really think that something needs to change, and that's not just because Nick Dacos lost the Brownlow. Let me just get that out there. That's not just because that, because it, it happened all throughout, um, all throughout the the Brownlow count, where players who statistically had a worse game than someone who had a better game, but they got a vote and the better player didn't. It happened with uh, with Sanders from the Western Bulldogs. Didn't have, had a good game, but Bont had like 32 and 17 and a goal and stuff and didn't get one vote, but Sanders got one vote. So I don't know, it was just, just happened through. I just really think that um, umpires need um, stats. So with all that, uh, with all that out of the way, um, I want to talk about Nick's season. Now, Nick in his is in his third year. In two his last two seasons, he's polled 66 Brownlow votes in his last two seasons. Incredible. He's 21. He was going up against a 28, 29 year old in Patrick Cripps, Lockie Neal, all these guys that are in their prime. We haven't seen prime Nick Dacos yet. That's the scary thing. He has Eight years before he gets to as old as Cripps is, and he could have two or three Brownlows by the time he's in. He hits thirty. He's twenty-one now. Get this: in his last fifteen games, sorry, in his last sixteen games, he polled 
in 15 of those, and seven of those were three vote games, and he still lost. He lost on 38 votes. Better than, it, besides Patrick Cripps this year, better than anyone else in the history of the Brownlow. Like, let that sink in. That I am just so fucking proud of this kid. Um, it just... To do what he does at 21 and lead this club. He's 21. He's 21. And he's not even in his prime yet. That's the scary thing. We haven't seen a prime Dacos yet. Also, Nick Dacos polled more votes than the whole of Richmond did this year and the whole of West Coast did this year. Something else to be like, what the fuck? That's incredible. What a player. What an absolute gem of a player. And to round out our Brownlow, so Nick had 38 votes. Jordan Degoe had eight votes, which I was a bit surprised by. I thought um, Josh or Jack Crisp uh, were going to be in that second. Jack Crisp had five votes. Lipinski had five. Josh Dacos had three. Um, I thought Cameron might have had maybe five-ish. Um, but Jordan Degoe actually stole a few off Nick Dacos, if you want to sort of call it stole a few. So if you were, if anyone was robbed, it was Nick Dacos by uh, Jordan Degoe and, and some of his other um, uh, teammates. But you can just kind of see... In a year where we didn't make the finals and we didn't have that good of a season that we usually do, uh, Nick Dacos really carried us. He, he really, really did. Uh, polled in games where he shouldn't have polled. Uh, polled three votes where he probably shouldn't, like, not shouldn't, that he was predicted to get one or two. Um, and he started he started pinching votes. And I was, I was just happy. He's, he was a 10-vote better. He had a 10-vote better year this year than he did last year. Nick Dacos, now get this, right? Nick Dacos could have been vying for back-to-back Brownlows. Remember last year, he had 28 votes. He loses the Brownlow by, what was it, three or four votes um, from memory. I think Lockie Neal got, what, 31 or, or 32 because Nick was injured. But he also missed out on votes where it should have been three votes and he, and he didn't get any. Or it was a bit it was a bit weird, the count um, last year. And... This year, to be up there again, in the conversation again, as a 21-year-old, and to have 38 votes, which is better than 97 other counts, is just unreal. I love this kid and what he's been able to do to our club and just with himself. And, and I'm just so, so proud of him. And he's probably going to finish with the, with a Copeland Trophy as well this season. Um, it's just absolutely, absolutely incredible. And I can't wait to be on this journey with him. As he vi- I reckon he's going to finish with... Is it silly of me to say he's going to finish with three Brownlows? We know he's going to finish with at least two, right? He's going to finish with at least two. Can he get the three? But let's just get it, Let's just get him one first, and then we'll go from there. Another one is that Bobby Hill won Mark of the Year. So absolutely amazing for Bobby Hill. I, you, if you caught me on stream, I was absolutely... I was crying my eyes out. Nick Dacos lost out on Goal of the Year. Harley Reid won Goal of the Year. A great goal by Harley Reid. They all were similar goals. I felt like Nick Dacos' goal against uh, Brisbane was a lot better than Harley Reid's, but what a, what am I to know? What am I to know? Um, and was that pretty much it? Was that the roundup? That was pretty much the roundup. Roundup. So yeah, I, I wanted to make this uh, give you my give you my thoughts on um, on the Brownlow and uh, oh Reid Rob blah 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 blah, and my thoughts on just if voting could be better. Again, I just want to reiterate the fact because I know people are going to, certain people will watch this and be like, oh, yeah, fuck this guy. But this is, I'm not at all discounting Patrick Cripps. He is a, definitely a deserving winner. You know, going through what, what Carlton went through and what he had to do, you know, grab them out and, and really pull them by the scruff of their neck. You wouldn't want, you, you couldn't get a better leader at, at a football club. Um, so, you know, again, cheers to, cheers to Patrick Cripps because you got to drink when you cheer. So cheers to Patrick Cripps. But um, yeah, Nick, 38 votes. I'm so proud of him. I'm so proud of him. I'm disappointed though. I'm, I'm bloody disappointed. I thought a tie would have been amazing, but um, it wasn't to be. We'll bounce back next year. But until then, like, comment, subscribe. Tell your family, tell your friends, tell your pets. And until next time, double shackers. I'll sweep you later. Yeah!